once again, I'd like to welcome all of you all for joining in uh, for our very, very interesting panel discussion on technology to the rescue. And we are joined by our panelists. A warm welcome to Mr. Amit Gupta, Head Solution Consulting India and our plan. I'd also like to welcome Mr. Jayesh Ulathil, Vice President and General Manager, India in Mobi. A warm welcome to Mr. Rajiv Gautam, President, Hariba. Let me also extend a warm welcome to Sri Balaji, CEO, Island Systems. And of course, as our moderator, we have with us Mr. Akhilesh Tateja, Partner and Head, Risk Consulting, KPMG in India and Global Company Leader, Cybersecurity. Looking forward to a lot of uh, interesting comments from our speakers and some questions from our audience. Please feel free to send them across. For now, I'd like to hand over to our moderator, Mr. Akhilesh Tateja. Sir, all yours. Good morning and good afternoon to those who are not in India. Uh, it is my absolute pleasure to host this wonderful set of speakers today. And thank you, Isha, for their uh, introduction. I'm sure uh, their introduction doesn't really do justice to the kind of range of topic they bring here. And I would like to explore some of them in the next 45 minutes, which you got. I can't tell you how excited I am, even though the topic, which is technology to the rescue, sounds so obvious. But there are so many details, so many nuances, and so many interesting parts which we'll discuss today. So I'm super excited to have the range of panelists which I've got today. So thank you so much for agreeing to be here. And thank you, ET, for, all of us, for, for getting all of us here together. It's an absolute honor and privilege for me to be hosting this session. As Isha mentioned, my name is Akhilesh. I work for KPMG. And uh, I've been in the business of technology for many, many, many years. But one thing which I find fascinating is that there isn't another business which changes faster than the business of technology. So I still believe that I'm learning every single day and I'm gonna be excitingly learning something today from the great set of panelists. As I mentioned many times when I happen to be in this uh, best seat of just uh, hosting or moderating the session, I think I'm the super lucky one here because I'm not the one who's gonna create any content today. I'm gonna to ask some silly questions to get some intelligent answers to all these wise friends I've got. And the other interesting job which I have is I'm going to choose as to who speaks and who does not speak. So I've always been somebody who's uh, frustrated by saying that, you know, uh, I will shut you up because if you don't know, I'm a consultant and consultants are generally on the receiving end of the world from, from client perspective. But today I feel very good to having changed the seats and I'm going to be calling the shots if you guys don't mind. So thank you very much for agreeing to talk about this topic. Uh, as I mentioned that uh, the topic seems obvious, which is about technology to rescue, which of course we all know. Now it's been a world which we've been living for over five months. And I'm sure uh, I wouldn't be wrong if I said that we have learned a lot, uh, new ways of doing things, new ways of uh, working, new ways of living, and almost every single thing has become different from what it used to be. And if there's one common thread in everything which we've been doing is technology. Technology is something which has made us do what we are doing in a more efficient manner, in a more effective manner, and sometimes not doing it because technology is doing it. I can tell you when we had a lockdown and uh, being in India, you get uh, spoiled for having house help. And I, when I didn't have, and uh, moving from a house help to a robo vacuum was another great set of technology for me to say, it's not that technology makes the task easier, actually technology made the task go away for me. So I think there's a great uh, aspect of technology which we can develop and discuss. Uh, one ground principle I wanted to put out here is that many times when we hear the word technology, especially in India, we uh, quickly associate with information technology, which is of course uh, one of the foundational block, but technology goes far beyond IT. As I said, my, my simple example of using a robo vac to uh, vacuum the floor, uh, and there are some of the speakers which have experienced technology way beyond IT, which has a far more significant impact on stuff like life saving and making sure that we all live in a great, great time. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to request uh, all my panelists to share some of their perspective to start with of what technology has done to us, what technology has come to rescue in today's time to make our life easier. But before that, I, I, I request them to do that. I do want to uh, tell all of our viewers to say that this is just the tip of the iceberg. So what you're going to see today, what technology can do, is going to be an easy and simple answer which you'll hear because uh, if you think in your own minds, technology has done wonders, uh, right from 
giving the right information on uh, whether you are in containment zone or not, information about what COVID is, how many people are infected, to even going down to delivering goods at doorstep, making our life easy working from home, like technology like Zoom and Microsoft Teams, et cetera, to even helping develop vaccines faster. Technology has done a lot of wonders. So what I'm going to do is that this is just the tip of the iceberg we will explore, but stay tuned. We'll talk about some of these interesting aspects of technology, what technology has done, some of those things which we would not want technology to do as well. So with that, let me just start my uh, opening with uh, Dr. Rajiv Gautam. Dr. Rajiv Gautam is the president for Reba, which is doing an outstanding work in the area of medical technology. So Dr. Gautam, here's my question to you. What do you think are some of these fascinating aspects of technology which you think we've been able to brought in to rescue during this uh, pandemic? Thanks, Aklesh. Uh, it's not technology is not only here now, but it has been since industrial revolution. If you see the four industrial revolution, it just started with with industrial revolution one, which was water and steam uh, powering mechan mechanized production. Second industrial revolution was electric power to the create mass production. Third was electronics and IR to automate production, and fourth is artificial intelligence. So all Everything has been done throughout the life is another technology. Now we have learned this new words in the technology in the COVID, COVID pandemics and everything, especially for the healthcare. I belong to the healthcare industry, so I will talk about it that, that healthcare has reached to our, uh, our door steps. And it's not like, like, like that we you wanted to go to the hospitals and everything, everything is coming to us. This technology, which is uh, basically uh, is the uh, meeting uh, meeting us uh, requirements at the doorsteps. I think it is that different technologies have come to us. I don't want to name all the things, but it has changed different the perspective of of the of the technology in the healthcare sector as far as this pandemic is concerned. So I think that's a that's a very good start for all of us to say that the range of technology right from your uh, going back to historic time to the industry 1.0 to industry 4.0 and there are many, many great examples. Uh, let me turn to uh, Jayesh, uh, who comes from a very different world. Uh, Jayesh uh, looks after uh, businesses, parts of business at Inmobi and somebody who I always uh, would like to bring in here. Uh, Jayesh, your perspective on what do you think are the, some of these areas, technologies helping us do things which we did not imagine before. Looks like that. Uh... You can hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. I forgot to unmute. Thanks, Akhilesh, once again uh, for inviting me uh, and thanks to the uh, team, ET team. Well, to me, the first question, uh, the first, the foremost thing that has come to my mind, and especially you also mentioned part of it, it is basically how technology has rescued me is with a dishwasher. Otherwise, I would have been doing dishes the, at least half of my day. So that is uh, that is something which I want to jokes apart. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, see, I come from the uh, ad tech space, and uh, there's a lot which has changed over the last 10, 15 years uh, in this space. And how has, uh, uh, from a work perspective, how things have changed is something which I would like to talk about. So uh, if you were to revisit the last pandemic uh, towards uh, and what is happening right now, last pandemic I'm referring to is the 2002 to four, three to four uh, SARS outbreak, which, uh, which had affected the world. While India didn't have much of uh, an effect on, uh, because of SARS, uh, the kind of information flow that we had was very limited. Thanks to the changes from feature phone to smartphones, thanks to the changes for, uh, in terms of data con consumption habits, and thanks to all the things that have made life easier around now in terms of information dissemination, the first things that have come to my mind is obviously information itself has become key. Information has become education and education has actually prevented or rather help us take many steps towards prevention of this particular pandemic. I can't say prevention, but at least uh, we can say uh, to a great extent to control the pandemic. Had it not been the case, we might have been in much more dire states is what I believe. While the numbers have started touching 33, 34, uh, or 3.3, 3.4 million uh, in India. Uh, and overall, I think it is hovering around 20, 24 uh, million worldwide. Uh, I still think uh, the kind of information that has flown, uh, the kind of awareness that has been created is thanks, big, big thanks to technology. Uh, the other thing, of course, is the way we have 
uh, the technology has made us capable of coping with the situation, right? Um, and that uh, that actually flows into the kind of work that I'm doing as well. So if you look at it, uh, technology has, you rightly mentioned it, technology has helped us uh, start working from home. Technology has started helping us track our health much better. Technology has helped us um, uh, engaging or rather, let's say, uh, coping with the boredom around. So entertainment has become a key aspect and the kind of uh, usage of apps that has proliferated in the last uh, uh, the, the three, four months of the pandemic, you will see there is a huge uptake of certain types of apps in terms of gaming, in terms of OTT to an extent, uh, in terms of self-help apps and you know do it yourself and of course things like zoom call which we are currently on so these are things which have again helped in coping with the situation and even when you look at education as a sector that has also uh, made huge progress because uh, the online education bit has made huge progress because of the advent of technology could we have imagined this that 16 years back is the question that i have so the the, the way technology has evolved has actually helped deal with the situation much better Having said that, there are areas uh, which uh, which have contributed quite a lot to this particular industry uh, that I am working in, and uh, especially this uptake of uh, you know uh, mobile consumption, mobile data consumption, mobile content consumption has given a lot more opportunity for marketeers, advertisers to actually go after the right kind of people uh, who are there, looking at the way content consumption is happening, trying to segregate people basis that so on and so forth, and targeting in the right. So these are my few initial thoughts around the professional front. Personal front, I already mentioned, life has become much more easier. Yes, had it not been for that, that particular uh, you know, uh, dishwasher, I would not have been joining this meeting, I guess. Thank you. Thank you, Jayesh. That's a great uh, connection with how technology helped your personal life and you are helping your clients uh, make their professional life better. So from that, let me turn on to uh, another uh, great friend here and, and someone who's got a uh, very interesting and seventh dimension. Uh, let me turn to Amit and uh, Amit is somebody who intrigues me because he is uh, a really great example of transformation. Uh, for those of you who understand Hindi, I'm going to say that Amit ki yatra pata lok se dev lok takki. He started out as a mining engineer in an underground mine to down to now selling solutions on cloud. So Amit, uh, why don't you tell us uh, what's the transformational technology which you've seen to come to rescue at this time? Absolutely, and uh, thanks for the kind words, Akhilesh. Um, and I'll start off with, I think, just kind of uh, talking about what Jayesh uh, and Dr. Rajiv said is that uh, technology has really changed. And, uh, and if I see my example, uh, it's really gone from, I would still say, very primitive technology when I started my first job uh, where just safety and a light is the most important thing that you have uh, to, to today's world where you know, where we talk about technology as as you Akhilesh mentioned primarily information technology so it's kind of if you think of all the technologies that we had uh, which was either mechanical or electrical in nature have now moved towards information so I, they were all, I would say, execution-based technology, right? Every mechanical device did a little bit of job, right? And if I take your uh, example of the robo cleaner, right? It's a mechanical device which will clean your house. But if you really think about these devices today, we talk about, hey, they are connected to your mobile device. It will tell you, okay, has he finished his job? Uh, what's his battery status kind of stuff, right? So we have seen technology, I would say, evolve in two directions. One I would say is all the mechanical electrical technology move towards information. Uh, but surprisingly and very well is the information also move towards the execution side of it. So it no longer is in a true sense you say that technology in a physical sense and technology in a data sense today been very different. Uh, and I would say that although this pandemic I would say is definitely not one of a good thing, but every cloud has a silver lining, right? So uh, maybe it's good that it happened at a point where I think a lot of groundwork in terms of supporting people, in terms of being able to work, execute, deliver was available. And I'm just thinking about that 
had it happened even 10 years back where for example the home delivery networks were not there uh, had it been at a point where for example you had to physically go and do things uh, what would have been the impact of us in this current scenario so i in this view look at this saying that okay it's we have a very bleak time but i think the silver lining was that technology over a period of time had luckily been in a state that it could rescue us whether it's essentially things like telemedicine you could call up a doctor and and speak to him and get a medicine and then you can call up for example a pharmacy nearby and i would say that uh, very traditionally low tech organization so uh, we always think of uh, the i won't name but the big e-commerce vendors the 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 other the, the medicine delivery firms as being the forefront of technology right uh, but actually in the initial days of the pandemic it was the mom and pop shop my kirana wala who was actually using technology to deliver me faster and i was kind of more dependent on him than the biggies uh, where a simple phone or a whatsapp uh, and some of the payment methods were essentially getting me stuff so i would say uh, over this period of time i think it's kind of helped us uh in making the structure more resilient and we have also leave it so obviously this is the brighter side of it uh there was obviously a lot of uh gloomier side also in terms of this technology and maybe during this conversation we'll talk about it uh personally things like personal contact connect is something obviously uh we do challenge we see a lot of challenge with and depending on the kind of role and the the jobs we deliver i think uh, our impact on those areas kind to uh, will be a little bit different so that would be my some of the starting thought circulation uh, thank thank you amit you talked about every cloud has a silver line and you uh, another point which i kind of really want to emphasize and repeat what you said that you don't need to be very big to take advantage of technology so in some ways uh, technology has become a great leveler so whether you are uh, small or large whether you are more sophisticated or less sophisticated technology will come to help you and in some ways you might actually be able to leave frog if you use technology in the right manner so i think great message for smes and others who want to kind of uh, take that journey so thank you i mean you talked about some of these uh, what i call the dark side of tech we'll come to that uh, so till then let's hold on i want to get to shri who's been also uh, working on some of these interesting implementations in today's time as we deal with this pandemic so shri over to you what are some of these things which you're seeing where technology is coming to rescue yeah uh, thank you vishek uh, um the f- number one thing i would say is you know technology is keeping me up uh, past my bedtime here <laughs> at this time so uh you know jokes apart uh what we are going through is a very interesting uh, scenario especially for company like us who are who is into digital transformation right and all along uh, we've been selling digital transformation um and it's it's always been difficult to convince customers to make a leap of faith in making an investment in you know uh, digitally transforming existing process to cut down on um, their costs or improve their revenues and so on but now uh, the scenario has changed um, upside down where the customers or uh, that we are dealing with uh, we are in the b2b space or enterprise space the customers are forced to uh, you know transform themselves uh given that there is no choice uh, left to them so some of the interesting examples that we are seeing among our clientele is things like uh banks uh, who are working in a very traditional way has have suddenly turned into a more of a self service online uh banking uh, solution uh, for their customers right Uh, take um, healthcare uh, the customers we are serving now they have suddenly uh, jumped on to uh, telehealth uh, that is not uh, a priority uh, before the pandemic um, and same with uh, insurance you know now insurance has uh, gotten into uh, newer areas like uh, conversational claims assistant or online self service insurance and so on and the slowly the LIC insurance agent that used to knock on your doors um, you know given that he or she cannot do that now has turned into an online uh, conversational agent uh, that's all technology enabled um and several other things like a uh, couple of years ago um uh, contactless shopping was a very fancy thing uh, amazon 
uh, Go based, uh, Amazon Go was something that uh, uh, was looked at with a lot of awe. Today, contactless shopping seems to be becoming a mandatory uh, thing. As, as time goes by, you'll see that happen in your Kirana shop ne right next door uh, as uh, that could be that could end up being the norm uh, today. So it's a great time overall, I feel, for uh, uh, building products and innov innovation, especially in the technology area that uh, we are in. And um, entrepreneurs out there um, who are uh, looking at this uh, current situation uh, as a challenge uh, can take up, uh, uh, you know, wear their innovation hats and, you know, think about products that they can bring out to the market that can really change how uh, people behave both on a B2C uh, or a uh, enterprise uh, environment and bring about real value for who are their customers meet. That's another very interesting take you got, uh, Sri, on that and different kind of uh, B2B scenario which you're seeing. Uh, you talked about Amazon Go, and for those of you who are not familiar, Amazon Go is an absolute contactless shopping model wherein you walk into a store, you don't meet anybody, all you need to do is you need to swipe your phone to the guns. Uh, you pick what you and you turn the phone and can very effectively and accurately in your Amazon shopping cart and all you do is just walk out and credit card which is associated with this just get charged. So uh, I remember when Amazon Go came out, uh, the, the first thing which uh, one thought in mind saying that okay it's a great model for uh, markets where uh, labor is expensive but for markets like India where uh, labor is not that expensive, uh, do you really need to have that kind of thing? But I think what this pandemic has changed is changed the thinking saying you don't adopt technology just because you want it cheaper and convenient. You also adopt technology because it is healthier and safer. So I think that's a great example which you brought in Sri here. Uh, I want to actually just uh, take uh, the same view right now. And I think I want to explore one more topic before we go on to the, the what I'm uh, itching to get to the dark side of tech, which I think is sometimes less talked about and much ignored. Uh, the aspect about uh, uh, not using technology which exists, but creating technology which doesn't exist. Uh, all of us have been uh, a great uh, critic of war, but if you actually look at the amount of technology the war has created is unbelievable. Uh, we all know that uh, the jet planes and the uh, microwave or the radar and all of those technologies came out of war. Had we not had those uh, world wars and others, I don't think that these technologies have been developed that far. But interestingly, a much less known phenomenon is that even the uh, shaving razors, which uh, most of us use every day, was also a result of World War because uh, it was uh, the need of those soldiers out there in the field and, and they couldn't really carry scissors and all that. So war and any kind of adversity of those types create new technologies, which then become mainstream. So in some ways, it fuels growth of innovation others. A uh, pandemic like this are also the opportunity for us to create things which didn't exist. So I want to just ask and in no particular order, if anybody wants to take a, a pick on what do you think that this pandemic is either created or is going to create either a technology or a new business model which didn't exist before or is likely to emerge? And what are the things which we haven't yet seen but may become real? So a bit of imagination, a bit of uh, Star Wars thinking. Anybody wants to take it? Because of that. Yes, if you let me go, I can actually uh, answer that. So we are we are doing two products currently. Uh, one of them, the partner one uh, by us, uh, uh, the one that we are building by our own is called uh, um, uh, SWA or SmartWorks Anal Analytics. And what SmartWorks uh, Analytics does is to kind of measure the efficiency of uh, your uh, team member or employee. Uh, while they are in this uh, home office type scenarios, you know, suddenly uh, uh, COVID has created a home office scenario that never existed um, for many companies these days, especially the IT tech worker um, who's always used to working in a, uh, in a team, you know, sh sharing code, having discussions on um, architecture and so on and so forth. They, you know, they're all doing that uh, over a Zoom call like this. But you know how, how many effective hours are they putting in? Uh, is something that we are measuring 
um, and not only are we using that uh, data for management to kind of understand how effective their workers are, you know, are they, um, you know, are they getting overworked or underworked and so on and so forth. The, the, from a wellness standpoint too, it's very effective for uh, the workers themselves to kind of assess like how many hours of uh, uh, active time am I having in front of the computer? Um, and, uh, you know, how do I actually optimize that and so on and so forth. So that's a product that you're doing um, and which I, I wouldn't say it didn't exist, but the need for it has suddenly uh, bumped up significantly. So that's, it's a, good not, and, that's a good point. And, 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 even, sorry to interrupt you. Anyone else do you think or any new emerging business model? Yes, Jesh, I see you unmuting. Yeah. So um, honestly, opportunities or situations like this always throw up opportunities. You've rightly said that. And uh, for a moment also, I'm not saying that uh, these are technologies which haven't exist, existed, but the usage of that, how it has been adopted is what, what really makes a difference, right? How from a niche uh, audience to a mainstream uh, a solution moves is that is the, that is the thing that I would like to address. So uh, in our organizations, as I told you earlier, also, we are into connecting marketeers with consumers, right? And <clears throat> uh, one of the key elements in this journey is also understanding the consumer. And when you're trying to understand the consumer, what, what best other than uh, your uh, researches that uh, help you understand the consumer, their behavior, and so on and so forth. What has happened in, during this period is physical interviews, physical uh, you know, research is becoming a challenge. The kind of the time, forget the time, uh, contact, proximity, all those things become a challenge. What we have innovated on is we have been able to position our Pulse platform, which is an audience survey, which is online, administered online over the mobile phone. That has been uh, that has been creatively positioned in a way that we can collect a good amount of information, uh, audience research, and put together that research outcomes to the uh, marketeer to utilize for his efforts from a consumer uh, CI, CI uh, consumer intelligence perspective. So we have experimented with at least, a, uh, I think uh, there are three cases which have gone on either on a, a new product survey or on uh, trends towards it. In fact, we ourselves have done two or three consumer insight survey towards how people are foreseeing the pandemic as such. We had one somewhere in March the second one somewhere in the first week of April. And it has thrown up a lot of insightful information, which would have probably not happened in such a short span of time had it not been for a tool which is online. So it is the need of the hour to have a tool which reaches out. And we've been, we've been able to be there and put it across and you know utilize that particular technology. So uh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm conscious of time, so sorry to interject, but I think the two great examples which uh, we heard from you about this uh, sentiment survey and what she talked about is the workforce analytics in terms of how do you really figure out that people, are they as productive as they used to be when they were sitting in my office? I think there are some great examples. Amit kind of alluded about this whole uh, calling out the, the pharmacy guy and getting things delivered. I think uh, another thing I will say that the, the e-pharmacy uh, regulation in India, which has been there for pending for a long time. Also, this pandemic started to uh, fast track that and we will have a lot more e-pharmacy and not just having the uh, the doorstep pharmacy which we deliver because we make a phone call and all that. So I think a complete shift in uh, business model coming about there. So uh, I think these are uh, some of these new technologies which we haven't seen yet, some of these new business model which we haven't seen yet, but we will uh, start to, to see. I want to actually, in the interest of time, I'm getting a clock ticking at my end. And I'm also very conscious that so many viewers are watching us online would want to know the not so obvious part of technology. And that's, the, that's my uh, interest area for today's uh, conversation as well. As much as we love technology, as much as the great advantage is created, I think we also hate it too. And uh, uh, for, for somebody mentioned that the boundaries are blurred. She mentioned that he's up today because he can be here. Otherwise, you would have said that I'm sleeping in my bedroom. All of these things where the uh, boundary between what is work and what is uh, non-work or what is work and what is life is kind of getting blurred. And there are many, many other uh, dark sides. So uh, Amit, I see you on my screen. Um, why don't I start with you? What do you think are some of these uh, dark sides of technology which you don't like about? Yeah. So I think it's, uh, as I was uh, in my earlier part saying about uh, the role that we play as a part of our jobs or otherwise, right? 
uh, and as a consultant as somebody who helps organization uh, it's very important actually when we talk to people is to be not able just gauge uh, i would say the verbal communication which comes flawlessly through uh, this technology medium uh, but the non verbal one the personal touch kind of stuff and i think that's where uh, i see that there are still scope for improvement i think uh, technology has definitely made things sim- simpler uh, but there's still the human touch the personal touch sitting in a meeting uh, sharing thoughts uh, also uh, listening not just listening i would say seeing that person and then being able to figure out whether he's he's getting it or maybe you have to change something so uh, as somebody who is essentially working in an industry where a personal connect has to be very important to be able to it's not a, a, it's not a, a, like a tangible thing that you're selling that hey this is a physical thing it's it exists in the same format for everybody and anyway whether you get through a channel b channel c channel it is very unique experience to a particular person or an industry or a company that you essentially delivering i think that part is still technology has not been able to do we have used i think the likes of zooms and webex but i still find that that is one piece that still needs i don't know whether holographic uh, thing will essentially work but i still feel that uh, that is a place where probably technology cannot span and i would and from my personal experience i would take one step ahead to education and yes education uh, like zoom these people have come to the rescue of education because the kids can't go to school but you also see the dark side of it that the, the students are not really engaged i see my kid right by the second session he is looking everywhere he is just waiting for the clock to change and then just run away from his laptop so i think there's still a balance there uh, something's good and something's bad in technology it's wonderful wonderful i mean so two great example is that your personal touch with your friends and your kids uh, trying to bunk school easier even if they are sitting in front i think in they can do many things so that's great uh, let me turn to to dr rajiv dr uh, rajiv what do you think are some of those not so likable part of technology i think uh, what uh, amit says is very rightly uh, is only the all the technology and it depends on the verbal communication so you have we have to say you have to hear but there is a silent language there is a relationship building between the human touch which which was their warmth of the palm was 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 not there i think that certain certain messages also not to be told and not to be not to be listened it has to be taken by by just by a click of eye or something like this or relationship or building because the organizations are built by the people work for people and when and the relationship we today we are totally dependent on what is being said and what being heard that so many so many lessons may not be may not be learned just by the voice that's a, that's an interesting perspective coming in from a medical practitioner to say that uh, and i when i went to my b school and i was taught a course in communication skills i think i remember right they said that only 35% of your uh, language uh, or 35% of your communication is verbal and the rest 65% is non verbal that actually reminds me of a very interesting thing i know i'm not supposed to talk too much here but i break sometimes my own rules uh there there's this whole concept which is building in my own mind about how this overuse of technology might actually make us very vulnerable and we may shy away from it and the, the concept i have in mind goes from the fact that uh, there, there is a uh, you know psychiatrist or physicist i can't know what the right person thing is uh, paul ekman in the us and he developed this science of uh, studying micro expressions in fact there was a tv show based on it called lie to me and he was considered the the human lie detector because you know the the machine lie detectors can be cheated but you know this micro expression which our naked eye generally misses or you know, these are not like the big uh, body language movements and the paul ekman story says that if i'm sitting in front of you i may be able to read your mind in some ways whether you're telling the truth or a lie now i am saying that uh, none of us can assume to be paul ekman but all of us can afford to buy a technology which has uh, the video capability uh, better resolution than a human eye and i'm sure i'll have someone like sri build a video analytics program on top of that to identify those micro expressions and as i now see jayesh on my screen far and wide and large i may be able to see if i had that video technology with me i say you know jayesh while he's smiling but he's saying that when will the guy shut up 
And if I have the ability to build that technology and that technology becomes far more commoditized, imagine, would you like to be on a video call or would you say, let's go and meet at a Starbucks coffee next door? So I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be some very interesting futuristic part of the dark side of tech. But let me just uh, turn to Jayesh, who's there on my street right now. Jayesh, what do you think are your dark side of tech? Well, I think a um, <clears throat> couple of those things, uh, I, it has already been touched by Dr. Rajiv and Amit. Uh, so the personal touch is something which definitely cannot be taken away and how, uh, at least in the near future that I can fathom, I don't really see a technology which can really replace the human emotion, right? Uh, while DeepMind and all are working towards that, I still think it's a long way to go and hopefully Terminator 2, uh, the, the, the Armageddon will not happen in the near future. And uh, yeah, I am a big fan of that particular series which you mentioned, Lie to Me. Unfortunately, they stopped it after the second or third season. Uh, and that exactly is what I'm missing. So uh, I, didn't, I don't know whether I mentioned this earlier. I have uh, actually uh, joined this new organization, which I, I represent right now, uh, during this pandemic. So I haven't had the opportunity to meet even one person in my team or, you know, around. And it's all been through Zoom and, uh, you know, uh, sorry, we have meets, uh, sorry, we have teams and uh, it's, it's been all through teams. And essentially that particular aspect is something which I'm missing. And when I look at my, uh, so that is the personal, uh, the professional aspect on the personal side, um, what uh, Amit mentioned about the way kids are getting educated, uh, that is a challenge area for sure. See, kids are in that phase of understanding and reading people. And the interactions with their uh, peers as well as with their, uh, you know, their uh, instructors are very important in the physical space. And that is something which the current, while technology is trying to replace the video and the audio, that physical space and connect is something which definitely is missing. And we, I don't know how to even address that situation. While we might try to, uh, at home, we might try to have that conversation going it really can't uh, replace that conversation. We, people talk about home education or home tutoring. This doesn't work according to me at least. This is one, the second piece which I wanted to touch upon. So anything in too much is also bad, right? <clears throat> so even vitamin C in excess quantities, even in the current situation, you can get your diarrhea. So uh, information, while the free flow of information has uh, helped us get, you know, bridge a lot of these gaps which have come about, uh, the biggest challenge that, that is being faced by us is also misinformation. So the same channel can be used for information, the right information as well as the wrong information. And technology is just an enabler there. And while technology is not directly responsible, it is in a way responsible for the misinformation. So these are two things which I come to my mind at the top, uh, at the top of my mind in terms of what needs to be addressed at the earliest uh, from a perspective of what is wrong with technology. That's a fascinating part. I think the first part was interesting. The second is even more interesting that don't cause the technology diarrhea by overuse. I think that's that's going to be an interesting uh, thing for me. Uh, I know we're just about two minutes left over and I'm going to uh, uh, go to Sri right now. But before I go to Sri, I just want to uh, request you to think one statement which you would like to sh uh, leave as an advice to all our viewers today about how can they use technology better or worse or less or moderated, whatever way. So just think of one sentence, I'll end everybody with that. But before that, let me turn to Sri, uh, your thoughts on uh, the not so great part of technology. Yeah, I'll, I'll like to uh, you know, see how, how I can save you a minute there. So uh, first of all, you know, I don't think technology is uh, good or bad. I think humans are either good or bad, uh, depending on how they use technology. Um, you know, technology uh, could be used uh, in a way where you're doing shallow learning and getting ADHD across various platforms, various applications, or you could do deep learning uh, in something that you want to go deep into and so on. So I feel that it's about how you control technology rather than you let technology control you. Once the technology starts controlling you, then you, you're toast, right? The other point that I, I do want to make is like the during COVID times, uh, employee engagement has been a very difficult thing uh, for us, right? I just heard uh, um, uh, our uh, CPO uh, tell the story that, you know, somebody joined uh, our organization, um, you know, a couple of months ago, uh, and we have not even had a chance to connect with that person, uh, you know, in person, although we've had multiple conversations or 
um, Zoom and so on, and, and the person leaves uh, and joins another organization, we thought the person was pretty good. But unfortunately, we, we have not had a chance to interface with that person enough to kind of build that camaraderie with the person. So that's, that's another thing that I can see that uh, we're all having to suffer because of COVID times. Interesting. So I think you, you, uh, you came with a very profound statement to start with saying it's technology is neither good nor bad. It's a human who, who make it. And your second part is that as long as we control technology, we are in good shape versus technology controlling us. So I think that's, that's your ending statement I like. So let me now just turn to uh, Dr. Gautam. What's your uh, sort of message to all of us? Uh, you're on mute, uh, Rajiv. I will simply say, which I learned, uh, avoid technology diarrhea. <laughs> That's a very good one. I think you should uh, get this line copyrighted before anybody else. Yeah. I'm sure you'll, you'll become a millionaire. Thank you so much, uh, Rajiv. Amit. Uh, I think in a similar lines, I think I'll say, uh, look for simplicity in technology and not complexity. I think simpler it is, the better it is. Simpler yeah. is the better. Simple is hard, but that, that's good. Uh, Jesh. Your any state? Yeah. So uh, the world, uh, the world is your oyster. Anything can be done, but uh, try to look at. Put, I mean, I'm looking at it from a, a consumer lens. Uh, try to put your consumer at the center of whatever you're trying to build. Consumer, it could be, it could be a speaker, uh, anybody. It could be anybody, right? But once you put the consumer at the center of everything then uh, probably you will be developing the right kind of solutions. We will be coming up with the right solutions. Consumer at the center and we will build a great thing. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I come to the end of this wonderful talk. I think uh, you will agree with me that we could have gone on for another several hours with the depth of knowledge and the breadth of ideas this group has. There is nothing short of uh, what we have discussed today. I feel actually disappointed by coming to the end of this wonderful talk. But I've taken back a number of great ideas and thoughts. I'm sure you all benefited as well. With that, let me hand it back to Isha. Thank you very much, Isha, for getting us here. And thank you, E.T., and all our panelists for this absolutely amazing conversation. Thank you. Thank you.